An alarming story out of San Francisco where police are accused of using DNA from rape kits to ID sexual assault victims as possible suspects for unrelated uh, other crimes. Um, San Francisco's district attorney says this is not only legally and ethically wrong, but treating victims like criminals could further discourage sexual assault survivors from coming forward. Joining me now is San Francisco District Attorney Chesa Boudin. Uh, DA Boudin, thank you so much for coming on tonight. I, I really appreciate you bringing attention to this much uh, needed and much important conversation and issue. Thank you for having me on. It's good to be here. Uh, now, Chesa, we cover so many cases of wrongful convictions that almost always deal with um, police and prosecutorial misconduct, many of them dealing with untested DNA to find, um, you know, the, to not find the real perpetrator, at least to exonerate the innocent. But this I've never heard of, where it's alleged that DNA evidence from rape kits are being used to connect victims to other crimes. And, and the only reason why we're even having this conversation is because your office received a case where a woman was arrested for a crime based on DNA samples that she had given prior to her arrest for a sexual assault that she had reported. What can you tell us um, about that? Well, I'm outraged. Uh, it's offensive, it's unethical, and it's illegal to use DNA that crime victims, survivors of horrific acts of sexual violence, submitted because they trusted law enforcement to protect them and to hold those who abuse them accountable and to use that evidence and to abuse that trust by saving DNA in a database for years and searching potentially thousands of future unrelated cases against that DNA database violates California's constitution. It violates the Fourth Amendment, the US Constitution, and it's a powerful deterrent that will make these difficult to prove cases even harder for us to bring justice in. Uh, it's why as soon as I learned of it, we started investigating, asking questions, digging in. Um, I made it clear to the police chief and to other local leadership that we needed to stop this practice immediately. I'm partnering with a member of our board of supervisors, Supervisor Hillary Ronan, on a local ordinance that would clearly prohibit our police department from doing these kinds of searches or maintaining these kinds of databases. And we're partnering with State mm -hmm. Senator Scott Weiner to do so uh, with legislation at a statewide level. Um, we don't know how many labs are doing this. Um, we've heard of at least right. one other lab in Massachusetts that was doing a similar practice, maintaining an internal database of DNA from sexual assault survivors and then testing future crime DNA against that database. It's, it's offensive and it is not what victims agree to when they courageously come forward and submit their bodies to examinations so that we can hold their abusers accountable. There is nothing more important to me and to my office than public safety, than supporting survivors of crime, and then and eliminating barriers to victims coming forward and reporting. Well, we reached out to the um, San Francisco Police Department for reaction, and Chief William Scott released a statement saying, if the claims are true, he's committed to ending the practice. Uh, Chief Scott also said, quote, whatever disagreements District Attorney Boudin and I may have, we agree that this issue needs to be addressed. At the end of the day, our respective departments exist to do justice for victims of crime. The last thing we should ever do is discourage their cooperation with us to accomplish that. Um, Chesa, the police chief agreed that your office raised questions that were concerning, but um, that he was told that the woman in question wasn't ID'd through a rape kit. Was that the sole evidence against this woman, her own DNA? The only way she was connected to this crime was her DNA. Um, there was video footage of the crime. We know the crime occurred, but the police identified her based on this DNA. We have a lab report that says, quote, during a routine search, and then it references the database that her DNA was entered into in 2016 when she survived a sexual assault. And it references the 2016 incident report, the police report number when she came forward as a victim. That is the basis for the identification. It's referenced in the arrest warrant that led to her arrest. Um, I understand that there's uh, a lot of damage control and communication spin going on uh, from the police department right now. 
Uh, and I agree with Chief Scott. He and I are committed to public safety. We're committed to accountability. Uh, and look, when we make mistakes, we've got to own them. Uh, this is a mistake that the crime lab made. It predates Chief Scott's tenure. Uh, and I look forward to working with him to solve this problem because it's unacceptable. And we're not going to use evidence obtained in this manner to prosecute criminal cases. It's unacceptable. It undermines victims' rights. It undermines the trust we need survivors of serious crimes to have in our agency so that they'll come forward and have the courage to cooperate with our investigations and prosecutions. That report that you just mentioned, the word uh, routine is incredibly revealing um, and, and could be very insightful in terms of how often DNA test kits are, are used to connect victims to other crimes. Um, are you aware of where that investigation into the alleged sexual, sexual assault of that woman currently stands? I mean, has her rape kit been tested to find the perpetrator? You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things, you, you bring up such an important point. For years, the San Francisco Police Department didn't even test rape kits. And I, I wanna just take a step back, you know? I mean, I, I'm a man, um, and we know that most survivors of sexual assault are women. We know that uh, people who are, are impacted yeah. by sexual assault are disproportionately female, trans, people of color, uh, groups that are already marginalized, disenfranchised, and disempowered. So we're dealing with a uniquely vulnerable group of victims. And after they've been sexually assaulted, in order for us to even have a rape kit to talk about, does it get tested? What happens with mm -hmm. the DNA? Mm -hmm. Survivors who have just lived through the unthinkable things none of us want to even imagine in our nightmares, have to go not home to shower or to a place of safety and comfort, but go to the hospital and have a team right. of medical professionals comb over their body, put their legs in stirrups, poke and prod their most intimate parts to gather DNA and evidence, hairs and skin samples. The folks who do that need to be able to trust that we are only using the evidence they give us for one purpose, and that is to bring to justice and hold accountable the person that harmed, harmed them. Now, in the case you mentioned, in the 2016 case where this particular woman came forward as a victim, my office did prosecute the perpetrator of the crime against her. We did bring charges. And that case is concluded. It's finished. It's not an open case or an open investigation. So there really is no wow. justification whatsoever for her yeah. DNA profile to still be stored in a police database seven years later. It's unacceptable. Wow. I mean, it was unacceptable just thinking about um, her possible sexual assaults still being out there, not being investigated. But once it was investigated and, and, and like you said, pursued and prosecuted, to still have her DNA still out there lingering in the event that she breaks the law is again out of, it's just out of line. Um, Chesa, there have been a number of articles published on this issue, but there should definitely be more coverage because we don't know how many more police departments are utilizing rape kits in the same way. You mentioned it earlier. Um, are you aware of any who currently are? So we just learned uh, recently of a lab in Massachusetts that had been doing this, that got into trouble for it, and new state legislation uh, had to be introduced to prohibit it. Um, it. It's really improper, and federal rules around the federal DNA database, known as CODIS, prohibit entering victim DNA mm -hmm. into that database. We need the same prohibition to apply at the local level for local crime labs. Uh, since learning of this, I reached out not only at the local level, but to district attorneys across the state of California and beyond. I've spoken with my counterparts in big cities and in many parts of the country. Uh, they're all looking into it. None of us, left, right, center, Republican, Democrat, none of us want to use DNA that was obtained from a crime victim in this way. It's unacceptable. It's illegal. Um, the trouble is that the crime lab reports are not as clear or transparent as we'd like them to be. The one we received, for example, didn't say it was obtained through a rape kit. It made reference to a prior police incident report. And it was only by digging in and looking at the facts underlying that incident report that my team learned what had really mm -hmm. happened here. So my counterparts are yeah. speaking to the heads of their crime labs. They're investigating. Uh, we all share this concern. And we, we have a simple message for survivors of crime. We believe you. We trust you. We support you and we will fight for you.
please come forward, report, and cooperate so we can bring folks who've harmed you to justice and so we can get you the services and supports that you deserve on your path to recovery. Well, you know what, Jason, that's an important message for sure. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that uh, more DAs in this country um, you know, reject or drop cases that are based solely on rape kit evidence um, because we, we can't maybe put an immediate stop on law enforcement or police departments that are using them in this way, but we can at least have DAs say, no, this is inappropriate, bring me more evidence, but you can't just bring me evidence solely based on something that is illegally retrieved. District Attorney Chesa Boudin of San Francisco, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate you.